Hey everybody, how you doing? It's another episode of Who's On First, and today I brought you John Santos. John, uh, introduce yourself. How's it going? How's it going, man? Uh, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. I think this is pretty cool, man. Uh, uh, my name is John Santos. I was born and raised in Dominican Republic. Right now, I live in Texas. Been here for almost five years. I work for a travel ball academy named Texas Mitsuno in Beaumont, Texas. And that's where I also run my brand, uh, Placa the Player Development, which I've been doing it for two and a half years now. Who introduced you to baseball? It's a, it's a funny story. So growing up, you know, in Dominican Republic, everybody watches baseball. Uh, as a kid, I, I had zero interest in baseball. One day, my dad, I remember that like yesterday, he had to change the tires on his car. Right next to the shop, there was a baseball field. I was 10 years old. And while they were changing the tires, I was taking a look at the kids playing around. I saw how fun that was. And, you know, I didn't think about it twice. And I said, I want to play baseball. So I started when I was 10 years old back in Dominican Republic. Played all the way up to I was 18 years old. Back then, you know, trying trying to get signed as a, as a, as a professional player. And after that, I had some college opportunities where I ended up coming to the States and attending to a few colleges. Okay. What colleges were those? So my first school, it's one of the most uh, competitive uh, junior colleges in the nation, Western Oklahoma State College. I redshirted there my first year, and I played there my, my, first, uh, my first year as a true freshman. After that, I transferred to NOC Tonkawa. That's another uh, little junior college in Oklahoma in the same conference. Uh, that's the place holds a special spot in my heart because that's where I, that's where my name got out there after after attending to that school. I had a really good year there. And lastly, I ended up going to Stephen F. Austin State University. It's a Division One school here in, in East Texas, Nacogdoches, Texas. What position yes, did sir. you play? I was a third baseman and a catcher, but primarily a third baseman. Playing third base, playing catcher, because I, I started to see a trend. I, do it, I did it too. I was a third baseman converted into a catcher, played a little first base, once in a while right field. But catching was always my my thing too. And yeah, I, I always wanted to play third base. I liked the hot spot until I had a bullet shot at me when I didn't see. I snagged it, but then I turned around and said, I don't want to play third base no more. I'm going to go second. <laughs> Man, I, it was my favorite spot. You know, as a baseball player, it, it was my, com my comfort zone, being okay. in that corner. Being in that corner meant the world to me. So uh, even even when I have practice with my kids and stuff, like I tell them, take pride on that corner because that's my yeah. home. Let me ask you a question. What's your philosophies at, as as far as the third baseman? What is the third baseman's responsibilities? Something I try I try to tell kids is this: a lot of a lot of position players before the pitch is thrown, you know, they're looking at the pitcher from that position. You know, you you seeing the pitcher from a different angle. To me, as a third baseman, you see the pitcher from a total different angle, looking at the pitcher the whole time while he re, while he's making his delivery and you tracking that into the home play. I think that's when a lot of kids get caught up as a third baseman. You don't have a whole lot of time to react. So my thought is always trying to shift from looking at the pitcher when he when he breaks into the plate. You know what I'm saying? So kind of like shift your view towards the play as fast as possible. That way it gives you time to make a decision before the ball is hit. Also, I'm not a big guy of, you know, start low. I think you you you, you want to be able to be athletic, and when you start low, you kind of you kind of feel like stuck, where you're not moving to the sides the right way. So it's more like a like a dropping into and going to the ball. When I say the phrase, and I'm gonna teach you guys something, you young guys that are watching, it's called the hot corner. When I say yeah. hot corner, third base. What is what is that? What comes to mind when I say hot corner? Man, well, I mean, just think about it. There's so many righties in baseball. I mean, that you see one lefty in the lineup, maybe two sometimes, and most of the balls are being hit to their pull side. So you're seeing a lot more action towards that corner. Everybody wants to hit the ball hard to their pull side. I mean, just imagine uh, Aaron Judge hitting the ball to a third baseman. You know what I'm saying? So you have to expect that. It it, it really is a position where, where you have to be prepared. You have to anticipate everything. So now once that ball is hit, you're at third base, 
That ball's not hit to you. It's hit to the outfield. It's hit to left field, left center field. You as a third baseman, what's your responsibility? What would you be looking for? Everybody has a job on the field. When the ball is hit, you know, it doesn't matter where it's hit. You must be somewhere. Uh, as a third baseman, you know, a ball is hit in the gap, let's say left center, you already know that's an automatic double. So your middle infield should be adjusting to a double cut. And as a third baseman, you're covering your bag in case of this guy's trying to push it for a triple. Same thing if the ball if the ball is hit to the left fielder with a man on second or with a man on first. That I mean, if the left fielder bobbles the ball, that guy should be pushing to third base. So you know you always you always try to be in the right position, such as getting to your bag when the ball is hit to right. another person. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, what kind of glove do you use? You use a smaller glove, a big glove. Everybody has their own philosophy on the infield glove. I'm a glove fan. I, I got a few gloves on myself. <laughs> That's something that I, I got a, a little collection, especially now that I'm about to have my first boy next month. So uh, I'm keeping all those gloves. But right now, the glove I use the most for practice is I'm a coach. Uh, I use a trainer. It's a 44. It's a really nice glove. And I call it the palm. Uh -huh. I call it the paw because I like small gloves. I mean, I think if you can if you can feel the ball with bare hand of a small glove, when you get to your regular glove, it should be easy. We're talking about third basemen. When I say third basemen today for today's MLB, what's what's the your top three third basemen? All righty, I'm gonna start with Mr. Manny Machado. I'm a big fan of that guy, man. Uh, <laughs> Watching watching that guy grow every year, it's, it's pretty cool. And, you know, he represents our country the right way. So uh, he's my number one. My number two, I'll say Nolan Arenado. Arenado, man, that dude's not human. You can't compare <laughs> that guy to anybody. I don't even know why I put it on, on second sometimes. I think he's the best third baseman overall. But, you know, I got to go with my guy Manny first. But those are two right there. And my third one. Uh, just because of how much he's improved throughout the years, especially seeing it this year, making a lot of diving plays to his glove side, uh, Rafael Devers. He's become, you know, one of the faces in the big leagues, and that guy can definitely hit the ball well. So those okay. are my three my three guys that I like to watch often. What about give me three guys from back in the day? Oh, man, from back in the day. I'll tell you my favorite, <laughs> I'll tell you my favorite guy starting up. Uh, I grew up wanting to be like Adrian Beltre. <laughs> Adrian Beltre, yeah, Adrian Beltre was the guy I admired as a third baseman growing up. I try to be as close as possible like that guy. He's my number one guy from back then. Uh, Alex Rodriguez, one of the best players to ever play the game. Uh, was a shortstop, you know, t uh, ended up playing third baseman. So every I, to me, I, I thought everything just became easier for him down in that corner. So right. that's my second one. And the third one, oh. You're making it hard, man. You're making it hard. Let's go with Scott Ron. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can that live with that. Had a that guy had a glove. A lot of people don't talk about him often. But, man, that guy can make some plays. You could have yeah. hit the ball down to him. You were you were a guarantee out. So, yeah. uh, those are three guys I used, to, I used to like to watch growing up. I'm going to give you three oldies and moldies. You ready? I'm going to give yeah. you Brooks Robinson. Okay. Baltimore Orioles. You way before your time, you way before my time. Yeah. The guy that I used to like to see, Greg Nettles, because I was a big Yankee fan when I was growing up. Another New York guy, Ray Knight. Ray Knight wasn't the best third baseman, but could hit. So I mean, now you have this Placata brand. Where where did you come up with Placata? I kinda I kinda know where you where that came from. So, you know, being Dominican, uh, I remember back in 2013 when we won the World Baseball Classic. Oh, it was all about, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I got to go there. <laughs> it, was, it was all about, you know, playing chain power, platano power. Uh, we, as a country, we came up with so many names, to, you know, to kind of like get our team going, you know, give them support. And I remember uh, Carlos Peña, former first baseman. He's the he's the main guy with with Placa. He's the guy you know who 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 talks about Placa all the time. But a lot of people don't know what it really means. Actually, I have kids about every day. At least one kid asks me what it means. So Placa to us Dominicans, it means when you hit a tank, when you smash, when you hit that ball hard. You know, what, let's say. In, in, in English, when somebody hits a ball over the fence and it's a no doubt, it's like, that's a bomb. or That's, that's a bomb. boomer. It's a boomer. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a boomer. <laughs> like us, when we hit the ball, we go like, that's the plaque at that. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it means when you, when you hit the ball really far. <laughs> What age group do you work with? From 9U all the way up to uh, high school. Uh, in the summer, every now and then, I work with some some college players, but usually I keep it around uh, nine nine years old to high school. Okay. What What do you see? Like, because a lot of the stuff that, that's happening now, I've seen a lot of like high schools that are just there. A lot of travel ball, and they're they're depleting the high school ranks of some of these good players. I mean. I know, I know you spoke about it on some of the, on Facebook and stuff, and there was a coach and people were getting upset, but I mean, what do you think of that? I have to speak from the point of view of the area I'm living in. We can't deny that uh, in the last couple of years, you know, the game has changed so much and coaches have had to adapt to that. I mean, if you don't, if you don't move on with the game, you're going to stay behind. And that's mm -hmm. something, you know, being a young coach, I, I, admire about it because I knew the game was changing in, in, in the right way. All this technology coming in and all of that. Going back to the topic after, you know, getting my experience as a coach, I started realizing that coaches in our area, they don't help high school coaches. They don't help the players the way they should. Uh, it's a reality and we can deny that most of the private coaches, most of those guys that are on the side doing lessons, coaching a showcase team in the summer, they're doing a lot more work than high school coaches. In my opinion, I feel like uh, high school coaches who try to build a relationship with those outside coaches that their players are going to see, are getting extra reps with. And that's that's I feel like that's what we're not getting from schools in the area where coaches are supporting that. Because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing is to get this kid somewhere, make him better right. to hopefully go somewhere one day. So yeah. that's just what it is, man. Just being able to to have that relationship between high school coaches and and private coaches uh, outside uh, travel ball coaches. I've spoken to several uh, travel ball coaches and instructors and stuff. And the thing that sometimes bothers them is that they train the kids. The kids are coming from lessons and they improve so yeah. immensely that when they go to the high school, they become killers. And then the ones that get the credit is the high school coach. It's not the, you know, the lessons that they're getting from their private coaches or the showcases that they're playing in. So um, I, I don't know exactly what's, what's going on, but a, a lot of these kids are, are skipping high school ball and going into just, I'm just going to play travel ball or I'm just going to do, you know, showcases. I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to, and they stay away from high school. And, for me, it bothers me just a little bit because I always wanted to play high school ball. And when I had the opportunity, I was told to make a choice between football and baseball. And yeah. I, I chose football and my dad called me an idiot for about two weeks. So <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't appreciate me playing football. But after he came and saw one of my games, he said, baseball is your love, but football is your game. You know, so it, it, it was one of those type of deals. But yeah, I, I see it like, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't know if it's the watering down the high schools and these guys are not getting those premium players anymore. I think I think players are getting a lot of exposure uh, outside of high school. You know, there's all these big tournaments going on in the summer where a lot of college coaches are attending to. Most of these tournaments are also uh, are also being played at big, uh, big colleges, you know, at their field. So the coaches are already there. So they're getting the exposure, and I think that's what's keeping them, you know, not away from high school, but if not, coach, college coaches now have the facility to see these guys outside of their schools, outside of their mm. high schools. Makes sense? And mm. that, I think that's just what it is. It's just the exposure. Right now there's so many events, so many uh, brands running events, so there's opportunities all over the place right now. Yeah. All right, so now I know there was a post that you put on Facebook and you was talking about guys, the strike zone. When I was coaching, I'd tell my kids, hey, listen, we got to use the A word today, adjust, because everything yeah. underneath your chin is going to be a strike today. My thing is, you know, there's a little imaginary square on the TV that kids are seeing every night when they turn on the TV and watching an MOB game. 
kids are really trying to relay on that. They're trying to bring that square out there during their youth games. I'm talking about 10U, 11U, 12U, 13U. It's a battle. It's it's really a battle because kids starting to like have that square that that strike zone square out there in their heads and they're taking pitches that are hittable. If you use a 32 inch bat, we're talking about you covering 32 inches from where you stand into across the plate. So there is a lot of pitches that you should be able to get to and drive instead of taking them. And let's not lie about it. We have umpires and travel ball, man, and the, the strike zone is as big as it can be. If, if the pitch is hittable, man, get outside. Get outside your comfort zone and do something about it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's life, you know? When yeah, they, yeah. You get, get outside your comfort zone and – and, and do something, you know, just because you're not comfortable doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. You know, I, everybody's got to try something that's not comfortable. It's going to happen. I've had some instances and I've umpired a lot of those tournaments. But, and I tell you, there's sometimes you begging for a strike and you see that pitch and you're like, come on, yeah. man, come on, yeah. man. Either hit yeah. it or get it off the, over the plate. Let's go, man. I know you guys get frustrated. I know the coaches get frustrated, but the umpires get frustrated. And when you sit in there and you have seven walks, seven straight walks, after a while, you're like, come on, man. And this, this no, is yeah, not going to be a five-hour game here. Let's go. You know, I'm going to start I'm gonna start popping some strikes here and there. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not going to go over your head. I'm going to call it a strike. If it comes around the plate, it most likely going to be a strike for you. <laughs> but it, like I said, it should, it, it should be that way because that little square is only on TV. When I was a kid, I didn't play travel ball because I grew up back in the Dominican Republic. But when I was a kid, you know, the guy that wasn't hitting that inning during scrimmages games, he was umping behind the pitcher. If I didn't have to hit this inning, I would be behind the pitcher calling balls and strikes. And, I mean, we weren't pros about it. So, guess what? The hitters had to make the adjustment. We right. see balls outside that square where guys are driving off the field. So, mm-hmm. my thing is, why, 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 why are kids not wanting to commit more with that? Why are we – you know, so focus on that little imaginary square. Yeah, sometimes you just got to go for it. You specialize in third basemen and catchers, correct? Yes, sir. I work primarily with catchers. I do hitting as well. And I have a few travel ball teams that I coach on the weekends. So I'm a little bit so, everywhere. So now when it comes to hitting, what, what do you, are you an aggressive hitter? You teach your kids to be aggressive at the play? Do you teach them? The whole time. I mean, in every lineup I make, my best hitter is my leadoff hitter. So if you're telling me on my team I have Manny Ramirez, he's hitting first. Okay. Because I, I know – yeah, I know the first pitch of the game is fastball. I mean, 99% of the times it is, especially in travel ball. Right. So we, we we have to be able to attack that pitch. That's what I, – I can't stand when, when my hitters are on deck, getting their timing down, then they get to the box and their first pitch is a fastball on the middle and they still get in their timing down. I try to preach live gap to gap, especially over the pitcher's head. I'm a I'm a big center field guy. You know, if you okay. if you want to be a consistent hitter, you gotta you gotta live in that tunnel. You gotta stay okay. tunnel through center field. All right. Yes, sir. All right, all right. That's that's uh I'm I'm an aggressive uh I'm a gra- aggressive player. I believe in being aggressive. Um all right, so here I got a question for you. So you Go got ahead. Barry Bonds, bases loaded, no outs. You gonna tell your guys to to walk them? Or are you going to pitch to him? What's the score? <laughs> tie score. I'm going to give you tie score. It's a tie score. We got to pitch to him, man. <laughs> we got to pitch to him. Somehow yeah. we have to. We have yeah. to. Man, yeah. why you got to give me that guy? <laughs> Here's a long one to right field. Forget about it. This one is headed for New Jersey. High into the upper deck. No, no. We talk, let's talk about the hats now. He pulled out his uh, Republic, Dominican Republic hat, and I pulled out my Puerto Rico hat. And, and it was it's it's fun, guys. It's fun. I love the competition. And Dominican Republic makes Puerto Rico better. Puerto Rico makes Dominican Republic better. Venezuela, right. Honduras, whoever. We just make each other better. And that's what we that's saw right. in the WBC. I mean, give me some thoughts on the WBC. What do you think about it this year? It, it, it's it's just the best event uh, in baseball in general. Uh, just being able to see so many countries get together for one purpose. I mean, you don't ever see you don't ever see big leaguers playing this hard early in the season. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. these guys are representing their country. They have their flag in their che- on their chest. So they go out there. Most of the times, they're not 100 percent ready yet. 
but you see them out there giving everything they got because they have a whole country behind them, and that that that's just the 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 beauty uh, of yeah. the World Baseball Classic. And and I'll give you I'll give you one, and it was a compliment to Manny Machado. Uh, Tim Mayers was the umpire at third base for Dominican Republic game and uh, Dominican Republic versus Puerto Rico game. He, he's a friend of mine. He umpires in Europe. He's a German umpire. He never realized the skill set that a lot of these major leaguers have. He was very impressed. He he made a call at third base, and Manny, he never seen anything like it. It was boom, and it was, it was like, wow. And he was on it, and he, you know, he gave, and he's like, when he went back, when he was going back to his position, he was like, I never saw the catch. Like, he saw the, he, he knew the ball was coming in. He never saw the catch. Next thing you know, it was, Manny was tagging him. And it was just like, whoa. He said, never saw the glove go up, never saw the glove come down. It was, you know, simultaneously. And he said that was one of the things that he realized that when it comes to major leaguers, he goes, the skill set that these guys have is is that a notch above. They prepare their whole lives to, to get right. to that point. Right. That's right. All right. And the WBC brought the Latinos together. You know, you, you, you're Dominican Republic, I'm Puerto Rico. But doesn't mean we're not brothers at arms. Just because you eat mango and I eat my mofongo, don't <laughs> you know? Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> at the end of the day, we still eating rice and beans. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still eating the same stuff, man. We still eating the and same that, stuff. That, that that brotherhood's always there, man. It really is. <laughs> All right. So here now, I now I got a, a little bit of a twisty question. Every baseball player is superstitious. What's your superstition? I told you I wanted to be like Adrian Beltre, right? I hate okay. it when people touch my head. <laughs> I could not stay in that. Like, for some reason, like, I wanted to be just like this guy so bad that that was something. Uh, uh, I was super superstitious about it. Uh, besides that, man, I wasn't really superstitious. You know, I used to uh, talk to myself a lot before I got in the box, before every pitch, I would come out of the box and I would, you know, kind of like, Give me a few taps on my back leg, just twice, and just let's yeah. go. Yeah, uh, that was something I always did. But besides that, I wasn't too superstitious. Okay, all right. Anybody on your teams ever had some crazy superstitions? They used to wear the same socks. Oh my god, dude! I had some teammates that will have the same underwear. If they went three for three that game, you but the next day they had the same underwear without being washed. <laughs> so yeah, that that was a thing. That was a thing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, be, being a catcher, I didn't like anybody putting on the equipment that yeah, bothered me. Yeah. I, don't, it, I, get, I mean, yeah. I would play if, if the coach said, hey, I'm going to change it from right field, you're going to catch instead. And then, you know, they had Johnny warming up with it. It would bother me. I mean, not to the point where I wouldn't play, but it just bothered me. I didn't like it. Um, I didn't like anybody. And especially when I was playing, I didn't like anybody touching my equipment. I would put it all the way in the far corner. And don't, don't touch it, don't sit on it, don't look at it, nothing. Leave it alone. Don't touch my gloves. Yeah, yeah. Don't touch my mask. Don't touch none of that. Leave it alone. You know, and I always begged my dad for my own equipment. I never was able to get it. And when the batter came up, you know, I mean, we can, if he wanted a, a high five or stuff, well, we don't, I don't do that. You know, I might, I might thump you. If you put your hand out, I'll thump you with my glove. But I wouldn't be looking. He'd be like, hey, what's going on, Rob? I mean, we homeboys in school, but on the baseball field, we ain't homeboys. Ain't no friends after you cross those lines. Right. And and you know what? People were upset at um the way they treated um Aros Arena. Aros Arena. Yeah. He went to give high five to the catcher USA. And people yeah, were upset. Smith. So yeah, well, so I, I turned around and I was like, listen, he would have done that to me. I would have taken my glove and do one of these and hit him in the hand and look the other way. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all part. It's all part of the show. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not trying to be homeboys with you. You know what I mean? I'd be like, yeah, all right, whatever. Here you go. Let's go. You know. <laughs> hey, sometimes sometimes you got to be careful with that because you don't want to wake up a sleeping dog. And I'm yeah. sure he did that game. So yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, you know what what, I'm that's why I would give him a little. You know, I had a guy tap me in the shin one time with the barrel <laughs> of the bat. Yeah, and once he did that, I jumped up and I told him, "Yo, don't do that." And he was like, oh, I'm just, I don't do that. Don't do that. It's like, it's like, what's up? What's up? You know, <laughs> perk me up. What's up? It's like, what you doing? You know, you're like, you want to do something? Like, Try to be nice, man. Yeah, yeah I'm trying. 
you know, I'm in battle mode here. I'm not in whole boy mode. We're in battle mode. So yeah, that's right. So sometimes that's right. you you know, catches catches have their own little their little things. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you being on. I appreciate you bringing the uh, the Republic Dominican hat there. Yes, sir. And I got my PR hat, so I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the who on first, guys. So we, we can leave as friends now. We can leave as friends. Let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, I really appreciate the opportunity. This was really fun. Uh, I'm sure a lot of a lot of my a lot of my my surrounding people and kids are gonna love watching this. <laughs> really Absolutely, man. The show for me is all about love of the game. It's about baseball. It's about showing these kids. Listen, guys, these kids, I tell these young kids, there's so much out there. You don't have to be a baseball player. Go into that front office. I'm trying to get guys to come in the front office and talk about being, uh, you know, a scout. Talk about being, you know, a GM and, and a vice president. You know, there's there's a lot of jobs out there. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, John, how we get in touch with you? My social media, you can find me on TikTok or you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, by my name, John, J-H-O-N, Santos, or uh, by my brand name, which is Placata Player Development or Placata PD. Okay. All right. Yes, and, you're, and you're located in Texas, right? Yes, sir. Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas. All sure. right, guys. Well, well, thank you, John, for being on. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. As we always say here on Who's On First, keep swinging. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. If you like the show, please do me a favor. Subscribe, right? Right? You see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. It'll ding you when I put something else on, all right? All right.